What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Francisco, and this is the Rode Pod Mic USB. So today we're going to specifically discuss how to set up the Rode Pod Mic USB using the applications that Rode has provided for its users. And I'm going to show you how I would personally use it, not using any of Rode software. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is obviously you're going to want to connect the Rode Pod Mic USB using the provided USB cable to the microphone itself and the other end into your computer. Once you've done that, go ahead and open up the search engine of your choosing. If you don't use Google Chrome, you might be a monster. You're going to type in Rode Connect. As you can see, I already have it for, and it's usually the first option that you see here at the tippy top. You click that and bam, Rode Connect podcasting software. If you're using Windows, download the Windows version. If you're using Mac, download the Mac version. Once you've downloaded and installed Rode Connect and you open it up, this is what you should see. Now, there's a good chance that the program will not automatically detect the PodMic USB. And if that is the case, don't worry, don't freak out and don't panic, I got you. You're gonna go ahead and go to the top right corner over here and hit preferences. Next thing you're gonna do is go to channel assignment. After that, you should see PodMic USB here under audio devices. You simply click it, fold it and drag it up to the top into one of these empty boxes right here. Once you're done with that, you should see exactly what I'm seeing now. The PodMic USB has been added as an input into the Rode Connect software. If you wanna use their Apex powered processing, you go to the uh, Rode icon here, the Rode PodMic USB icon, you click it and bam, this little window opens up. You've got your ability to set the gain for the microphone right here. Uh, ideally, you wanna stay somewhere within the green range over here. Never, ever, 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 ever go to the red. Never go to red, okay? Red's bad, really bad. So you stay in the green, and then you're gonna be able to see a couple of different options over here. So the first one that we see here is noise gate. Noise gate is basically gonna tell the mic when to stay closed so it doesn't capture any sound, and when to open up so it captures sound. You use this as a means of eliminating a lot of your environmental noise. Like I got my sprinkler system running outside of my window right now, I got my AC, my ceiling fan, and my PC fan. And if this is doing its job correctly, you should hear nothing at all except for my voice or, or, What's most likely the scenario here is, is that you hear me speaking and when I'm speaking because, because the mic is now opened up, you're gonna probably hear some of the other noise in the background but because I'm actually speaking so closely to the microphone, the amount of noise that you're gonna hear is a lot less than it would be if I were to just say be quiet and deactivate the noise gate like so. Now that we've activated our noise gate again, it gives you the option to adjust its threshold, its attack, the hold, the release, the range. The hysteresis, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, I'm gonna look up the definition for hysteresis and add it down here somewhere because I've never heard of that word. So that's enough about noise gate. I usually just turn it on and leave it be. The only thing I mess with here is threshold and that's about it. And you do have a nice visual graph representing how the noise gate is working compared to what your voice is doing as you speak into the microphone. If you click on an arrow over here, you're gonna see the compressor. And if you need an idea as to what the compressor does, well, you know, as we speak, naturally some parts of our speech comes out loud, some of it can be really quiet. And if you don't have a compressor on, the loud, the loud stuff comes in loud, the quiet things come in quietly, and that can kind of create some unevenness in the delivery of your commentary for your video, for your streams, or what is it, you know, for whatever it is. The compressor basically tells everything to stay within a certain range of volume. The louder parts of your speech get compressed down to a certain volume level and the lower ends of your speech, the quieter parts of your speech get compressed upward into a certain level of volume for lack of a better term. That way your level stays about the same no matter how loudly or how quietly you're speaking. Now, of course, if you scream into your microphone, it's not necessarily gonna work and you might end up clipping, but there are some solutions for that that we can discuss at a later time. For, for compressor, all I ever really do is I just adjust the ratio to 4.0 to one. The other thing that we have here are the exciters, okay? So we've got big bottom and we have the oral exciter. The best way I can describe what these do to your voice is big bottom helps you with your, um, with your low end, the bassiness and the boominess of your voice. And the oral exciter affects the higher end of things, right? And the only thing I ever touch when it comes to the exciter part of the Apex window here is drive. For some reason, and I don't know why, drive just really adds a little bit more warmth and a little bit more low end to my voice when it comes to using the Rode microphone. And as far as the oral exciter part, I just turn it on and leave it be. The cool thing here is that you're able to deactivate each one separately from one another and this is what you would get in the event that you decided to do that. And of course, if you want to just go ahead and turn them both off, then this is the result of that. And if you click the arrow again, we're back once more at noise gate. I don't, I don't like it. 
I, I personally don't like Rode software. Rode software, it, it almost tries too hard to be overly simplistic. And instead of just sticking to like the norm, they try to do their own thing. I think their version of processing is okay, but I don't think it actually really gives us the amount of control we really wanna have as you know content creators. So instead, let me show you what I would do and what I have done if I were to buy this microphone and use it solely as a USB microphone. So my preferred method of using any sort of USB microphone and any microphone at all, because I've got USB mics and XLR mics, is using Elgato's Wavelength software. So what you're gonna wanna do is obviously, you would have to have a device that enables you to use Wavelength. That could be something like the Stream Deck Plus, the Elgato Wave XLR, or one of the Wave microphones, the Wave 1 or the Wave 3 microphones. If you have any of those products, you can use Wavelength. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and plug in the Rode PodMic USB. One end of the cable goes into the mic, the other end goes into the computer. You're gonna go ahead and add an additional input. And from the drop-down menu, you're gonna select desktop microphone Rode PodMic USB. What you're listening to right now is the microphone running connected to my computer with no post-processing, no VSTs, nothing at all. This is what the mic would sound like, plug and play with nothing else. Quick note here is that you're still gonna have to download the Rode Connect app. The reason is, is you're gonna use that app to go ahead and adjust the gain of the microphone because this mic has an onboard DSP, anything that you do in the Rode Connect app is saved directly onto the microphone. You can close the app out and anything that you've done to the mic is still done on the mic. So using any of the Apex you know, processing settings, any adjustments you make there, it's all on there. Keep that in mind too, because if you do have their noise gate turned on and you do what I'm about to do, it's gonna conflict with the noise removal that I'm gonna use by Elgato over here, all right? So you download the Connect app, you set the gain. I'm using right now 49 decibels of gain. I close the Connect app out and I've got Wavelink installed. I added the microphone in as an input. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do if you wanna start doing some post-processing here or some, you know, add some VSTs, better said, is you're gonna go to the icon down here at the bottom, you click it, and I've already got everything set up, right? So we're gonna go ahead and add in noise removal. But before I do that, let me let you hear what this microphone sounds like without any sort of noise gates or noise removal activated. Now let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. Now let's assume that we wanna go ahead and add something like the compressor, right? So if we're gonna do that, we're gonna go back down here to this icon right here, we're gonna click it, you're gonna hit the plus sign, and then for some reason, which is kind of weird, the Reaper plugins that I downloaded a long, long time ago got added onto its own submenu called Kakos. I don't know why, but that's exactly what happened. So you go over here, you hit recomp, click it, and then this little guy is gonna open up, now I can't make this one any larger, but again, the only adjustment I ever make is I change the ratio from 1.0 to one to 4.0 to one. And that's it, then I close it out. So now suppose you wanna add some EQ because right now what you're listening to again is the microphone plug and play. This is what the mic sounds like with no EQ whatsoever. And that's what it sounded like since I started this whole Wavelink segment, by the way. Um, if you wanna add this in, you can download the different VSC plugins directly from Elgato's website. They have a whole list of them that you can download for free. And when you get the ones that you want, you're gonna get an EQ one. I'm sure it could be Reaper plugins or it could be uh, it could be the Reaper EQ or it could be the Elgato EQ. I prefer the Elgato EQ. You'll see here why in a moment. And, and just FYI, this whole method right here, this is why I prefer the Wavelink software over Road Connect or any of other Road software. You go down here to the icon again, you press this, you press plus, you're gonna go to Elgato and you're gonna add an Elgato EQ. I've already got it set up, but I have it turned off right now because again, this is the mic organically on its own. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on and you should now instantaneously hear a very major difference in the microphone itself. But let me show you what I did. So I went ahead and boosted up the uh, rumble and sub bass and the boom and warmth by like what? One decibel here, half a decibel there. I dropped the boxy range and the nasal range down by three decibels a piece. I increased presence by about a decibel and I increased air by a decibel. And I'm saying a whole bunch of words, right? Rumble, sub bass, warmth, boxy, nasal. So the reason I love using the Elgato EQ and the Beacon EQ on the Beacon app does the same exact thing, by the way, is that it has this very nice guide right here at the bottom, right? So you can see how different range of frequencies are shaded gray, white, gray, white, gray, white. Well, it tells you right here from 20 hertz to 80 hertz, any adjustments that you make here is gonna affect the rumble and sub bass of the voice. And from 80 hertz to 300 hertz, you're gonna affect the boom and warmth. From 300 hertz to 1.4 kilohertz, you're gonna affect the boxiness of the voice and so on and so forth. This guide is single-handedly like the best thing that I think Elgato and Beacon have implemented into their EQ. Because unless you happen to know 
what happens to a person's voice within a given range of frequencies, you're, you're going to have to sit there and play around for a while to kind of test things out and see what each individual frequency does and how it affects your voice. This just eliminates a whole lot of that guesswork and makes it super easy and super simple. And this alone is why I prefer using Elgato's Wavelink versus Rode Connect or Rode Unify and maybe even the Beacon app. I love the Beacon app, but the Beacon app, its biggest hindrance right now is that you can only use the Beacon mic with it. If they opened it up to other microphones, I think the Beacon app could be absolutely incredible. But that's it. This is how I would set up this Rode PodMic USB. If I went out and I did buy it, by the way, this is not free. I bought this with my own money. If I was a new content creator or a content creator upgrading my microphone or just getting started and buying this microphone right out the gates, this is exactly how I would set up this microphone if I was to use it via the USB connection. I would use Wavelink software if I have the means to do so, meaning do I have the har appropriate hardware to give me access to Wavelink? And if you don't have that, you can use Rode Connect and you can get relatively solid audio from that. But if you don't have anything that gives you access to Wavelink and you don't want to use Rode Connect, you can still set the mic up using VST plugins directly in OBS. And I might be wrong, but I'm almost certain that you can download the plugins that are available on Legato's website and use them directly in OBS without having Wavelink. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you found this video informative and helpful. Um, keep tuned to the channel because I will be working on my actual full review of the microphone over the course of the week. I do plan on having that out by next Sunday. So y'all stay tuned until next time. Be good to yourselves, be good to one another. Peace out.